Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson we'll take a look at a pattern uh, with an event-driven architecture and also systems that use messaging called the multi-broker pattern. You can get a listing of all the lessons I do on Software Architecture Monday uh, through my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. As a matter of fact, um, this is almost been six years uh, to the date of this <laughs> recording here uh, that I've been doing Software Architecture Monday. So um, happy anniversary, I guess. <laughs> well, in this lesson, I really want to talk about techniques for increasing the overall throughput and capacity of events or messages through a system. And let me show you what the problem can be. So what we have here is a regular message broker, uh, something like a RabbitMQ, ActiveMQ, maybe Solus or uh, Memphis or, um, oh gosh, a bunch of others, uh, Blaze, uh, WSO2. It's, it's basically a message broker. It could be used on messages or events. Well, most brokers, um, non-persisted messages, can do a throughput of around 11,000 messages a second, uh, give or take a couple of thousand. Persisted goes down to about three to 4,000 messages a second that these kind of brokers can actually process. The issue occurs when we have services that are sending an excess amount. For example, each service is sending 4,000 messages a second to this broker. Well, collectively, that's 12,000 messages a second getting to that broker, which gives us a deficit of 1,000 messages a second. And of course, the broker won't be able to keep up and will eventually crash causing all of our services to correspondingly crash as well. So how do we address this issue? There's a couple of ways. <laughs> One knee-jerk reaction from a lot of people will say, well, yeah, this is an easy problem to solve. Just use Apache Kafka. Well, it can be a solution to this if we can use it. So I'm going to describe this particular solution quickly, but then show you how we can simulate the same kind of superpowers that Kafka has with regular messaging. Because with Kafka, we can get upwards to 100,000, depending on the message size, upwards to a million messages a second in a single Kafka topic. So now, if we're talking about that kind of throughput in this kind of streaming architecture, 4,000 messages a second is nothing. That gives us so much growth. As a matter of fact, in this particular scenario, 88,000 additional messages a second we could process, uh, which is why Kafka, Apache Kafka, is uh, so popular in especially areas of microservices where we do have a lot of services, um, areas of uh, logging kind of facilities, uh, things like, for example, metrics gathering and observability. But this can be a solution. And as a matter of fact, I talk about Apache Kafka almost six years ago in lesson two where I talked about the differences between Kafka as a streaming architecture and standard messaging, things like RabbitMQ and ActiveMQ and these kind of brokers. Well, they are different, and Kafka does have some superpowers, one of them being this extreme level of throughput. But what if we can't use Kafka? Is there another way of being able to still increase the throughput and capacity of my messaging system or my eventing system? And the answer is yes. It's something called a multi-broker pattern. And the idea is this. We take our broker or brokered clustered instances and we start replicating those. We create multiple brokers. Now, these are <coughs> separate either instances right here or uh, these are separate clustered instances. And so the idea here is that each service is going to make a connection to both of these brokers, treating these as one logical 
single broker. Effectively, both these brokers together can give us a throughput of 22,000 messages a second. So we keep the same named queue within each of these brokers. So each of these broker instances will have the same exact named queue. Now, what happens is this. Each service connects to both of these brokers. And correspondingly, with our 4,000 messages a second, this gives us a growth of 10,000 additional messages a second. So now, each service makes a connection to each broker, A and B, and does a simple round-robin algorithm as it's doing its sends. Send to broker A, send to broker B, send to broker A, send to broker B. So effectively, um, each of these services are effectively sending only 2,000 messages a second to each of these brokers. Uh, but you can see collectively, it's treated as one logical unit, regardless of the clustering, giving us that growth and excess. If we add another broker, we can get up to 33,000 messages a second. If we require these messages to be persisted, this becomes even more significant. This is the idea of this pattern. Well, every pattern has its trade-offs, and the multi-broker pattern is no exception. Because what I just demonstrated for you is the fact that with this pattern, we can increase the overall throughput, the capacity, the responsiveness, and also uh, the scalability of our eventing or messaging system. However, it does come with some trade-offs. Uh, those trade-offs are additional complexity within our infrastructure, additional cost, especially due to licensing. But perhaps more importantly, <clears throat> unfortunately, with this kind of pattern, we cannot guarantee FIFO first in, first out ordering of messages. You see service A can send a message to broker A and then broker B, but we can't guarantee that this message too is processed before message one. So this is one of the areas where uh, another lesson I did with the thread delegate pattern um, it gives us maybe a broker affinity for certain kinds of contexts, which can kind of give us that messaging order. Um, so I would encourage you to look at that particular lesson. Um, you can search on my website uh, under lessons uh, for the thread delegate pattern and combine that with this uh, to be able to get that message order. All right, so this has been lesson 178, the multi-broker pattern a way to be able to increase the throughput and capacity of our messaging or event-driven systems. So stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday. And, and thanks for listening.